So hello everyone, uh, welcome to Swansea, welcome to the School of Management, thank you for joining us this evening um, on our uh, virtual open day. Uh, so my name's James, I'm part of the student recruitment team here in the School of Management, I'm joined by uh, Professor Garen Harvey. Um, so yeah, we'll just run through a little bit about uh, what we're going to talk to you about this evening. So um, we're going to kick off the session very shortly with a little bit of an introduction as to what it's like to study with us. Um, Professor Garen Harvey is going to talk a little about, uh, about the modules, about the course content, about the way that we teach here at the School of Management. Following on from that, we'll discuss uh, how to apply to university, what we look for here in Swansea in an application, how it works with grades, how we look at your, your personal statement, your references and everything else. Following on from that, we've got Luke here. He's here to talk a little bit about his placement year and the experiences that he's had um, as, part, as, as a student here in the School of Management, he did his year in industry with Honda, so that's well worth sticking around for. And then at the end, we've got two of our brilliant student ambassadors, Maruva and Sophie, to talk a little about uh, about life here in Swansea University. And it's also an opportunity for for, uh, for them to answer all of your questions about, uh, about studying in Swansea. So your questions, send them throughout the evening. Don't feel you have to wait. Uh, you can send them to us through the webinar platform We'll answer them at the end of the session. Um, so get get as many questions as you can sent over to us. Anything we can't answer this evening, we will get back to you via email on. So uh, don't fret if we don't cover it at the end. Um, but yeah, send them on. So we're here at the at the Bay Campus. You can see in the top left of your screen uh, at present. This is a brand new campus. We're only about five years old, and we're here in the twenty two million pound School of Management building. So uh, we're very lucky here to have state-of-the-art facilities, as you can see. Um, so here on the Bay Campus, we're next to the beach. Um, here in the School of Management, we're joined by engineering. We're joined by science as well at the moment. There's a lot more to come to. Um, on the other campus, we've got Singleton Park. Um, we've got Arts and Humanities. Uh, we've got Human Health Sciences. Um, more of the arts-based subjects are based there. So we're two campuses. Here in Swansea, both by the beach, we work very close together, um, and we're in we're in the corner of Wales, the southwest corner of Wales. So we're not too far from other cities like Cardiff and Bristol, um, so we're quite quite easily accessible. So in terms of the courses you can study here in the School of Management, we've got we've got quite a range. Um, so we've got our core kind of business courses, our business management programs. We're lucky we've got a wealth of different specialisms within business management as well. Um, there's accounting, accounting and finance and a finance degree too and of course there's economics so we've got um, economics and finance, economics and business too. Uh, one of the courses that I really should draw your attention to is new and, and we're very excited about it is our BSc in International Tourism Management. So this is a new course starting in September, um, it's an opportunity to explore a range of different issues within tourism. As well as these programmes, we've also got we've got a foundation year, so perhaps and we can touch on this a bit later on, perhaps if you're a little bit worried about your grades, or perhaps if you've been, been out of education for a little while, perhaps the foundation year might be something that, uh, that you'd be interested in. And it's worth me pointing out before I hand, uh, hand you over to Professor Harvey, it's worth pointing out that the year in industry um, and the opportunity to study abroad is, is available on all of our programs. So from marketing to tourism to economics, business management, you've got that opportunity to do your year in industry or your year abroad, as you'll hear from Luke later on. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to hand over to, uh, to my colleague, Professor uh, Garrett Harvey. He's a professor of people and organisations here at Swansea University. And uh, yeah, Harvey's going to talk a little bit about our teaching philosophy here in Swansea. Thanks, James. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm a uh, research professor uh, in the area you can see on the screen. Um, I also teach on the first year of the business management degree. So if you join us, and why wouldn't you? It's an excellent degree. Um, you'll see me within the, um, the first semester. Um, we have a, a very distinctive approach to teaching here. We, we have a, um, a research-led teaching philosophy. That means a lot of our staff will be active researchers in the field, uh, myself included. So what we teach will be um, kind of cutting edge stuff. It won't be led uh, from textbooks. You will be introduced to the kind of things that we are interested in. Um, it is, we do have a range of staff who are both um, 
uh, research focused and the staff who have practitioner experience and people like myself and several of my colleagues have had you know careers outside of academia and have come back um, to research and to teach so it, it allows us to provide a very rounded um, picture of the world of work, academic and um, uh, practitioner focused. Um, in terms of the first year, there is a, a common first year across our programmes and that's, that's beneficial because it does allow students then maybe to um, change their um, degree focus, the degree programme in the second year. Um, so everyone will study much the same thing. As I say, you'll, you'll have me for a semester on managing people and seven other modules. When you get into the second year, you'll have some modules which will be specific to your degree so that your degree is meaningfully different from other degrees that we offer and there will be um, the possibility of, of selecting a small number of optional modules. Okay, so what we've, uh, what I mentioned in the last slide was the, the specialisms. We have a range of specialisms there. Um, there's quite a number of them. All of these are distinctive. Um, as I mentioned previously, we do have um, the, the, the second year in particular um, and the third year, you will specialize in this particular area. So there's a range of things you might want to focus on. Um, if you're interested in the kind of area that I teach in, that would be human resource management. But if you're thinking about, um, you're interested in, in sort of your own business and, and how um, entrepreneurs operate, then we have that as a focus. I'm not going to go through all of them. There, is a, there are a range of these to consider. And as I say, because of the common first year, you can move between these programs if you don't feel you're on the right program at the end of the first year. We have a range of um, possibilities for students to engage with business. Now, one of the things that every university will be pushing at the moment uh, and rightly so, is the employability. So it is about studying at a higher level. It is about critical faculties, uh, your ability to engage with um, you know, intellectual material, but we do also want you to be able to engage with business. Now, the, the example there is the final year project. This gives you a great opportunity to engage with the practical um, side of business, not just um, the, the academic um, stuff that you'll be focusing on elsewhere in the degree. What we've got here is an example of the timetable that you'll be studying. Now, it, you can see the sort of coloured blocks there. That's actually classroom time. It may not seem like a lot of time. And that's because a lot of what you do in university will be self-supported study. So this is the time you'll spend in contact with people like myself and my colleagues. But beyond that, we'd expect you to match and more than match that in time you spend dedicated to your own study. This is time spent in the library. Um, this is time spent reading. After all, you read for a degree. So beyond the, the, the sort of color blocks you can see there, we would expect you to treat this almost as a full-time job and to spend a lot of time um, engaging at an individual level with your studies. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Harvey. This, it's, uh, it's really important to just have that, that, that insight into what it's actually like to study a degree here here in Swansea University with us in the School of Management. Um, as you can see, it's, a, it's probably very different to, to your A-levels, to what you're doing at the moment. Um, so with all of that in mind, obviously, and I'm sure it's something you're thinking about right now, we come to actually applying for university. Now, it seems like quite a murky world. There's a lot to, uh, a lot to think about, a lot to take on board. Um, UCAS is, is often quite a confusing process as well. For us, we want to make it as easy for you um, as possible, basically, to apply and to speak to us. So that's why, as you can see on your screen now, get in touch. So you can see my email address at the foot of the screen there. Get in touch, you know, at any point if you've got any questions. Um, if you've got a bit of paper with you now, maybe jot the email address down um, so, that we can, uh, so that we can speak about it more in future. Essentially, and in short, across the board here at the School of Management, we're looking for around ABB to BBB at A-level. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be studying A-levels. You could, for example, be studying a BTEC or BTEC Extended Diploma. There's a myriad of other qualifications that we'll look at from across Europe and the rest of the world too. So perhaps if you're not doing those A-levels and you're still interested in coming to, coming to study here, get in touch with us and we can, uh, we can have an informal chat about what kind of offer you'd be, you'd be looking at. It's worth me adding as well, which is unusual across a lot of business schools in the country, we don't actually ask for maths at A-level. 
So we're really lucky here that um, we've got a wealth of experience of experienced academics like Professor Harvey here. If you haven't done it, uh, Maths A level, we'll make sure that you're trained up uh, and that you're ready to, to, to be at the same level as those guys who did do the Maths A level in the second year. So for example, a subject like economics, which you know typically you think it's gonna be very maths heavy, actually we've got a special module tailored for you if you haven't done Maths at A level. So um, don't let that put you off. As I mentioned earlier, we do also have uh, the foundation pathway option. So say we give you one of those offers of ABB, BBB, something like that, and you're a little bit lower, we do have the op option to offer you a foundation year, which is essentially an extra year to, to develop your skills a little bit, to work on a few different aspects of, um, of studying, particularly the independent study that, uh, that Professor Harvey's mentioned um, earlier, so that come your first year, you're ready to go and we're finding now with the students that have just graduated from the foundation year we're actually finding that finding that a lot of them are actually doing better in their first year even than some of the guys that came straight from a levels because they've really valued that extra that extra year of uh, preparation Gogo coffee started from a young age it was about 16 when i first thought of the idea it was originally going to be an ice cream bike with that, with the margins and with the concept, it just came together and then naturally moved on to what vehicle I could use. And as a young driver, I had to look at what was cheap. So I came up with a smart car, which led to, led to this. So had it still fabricated in and then had everything fixed in place. And, and this is where we are today. So the cups that I use are fully compostable, 100% uh, compostable cups and lids. That's for all cups, the espresso cups, as well as the normal serving cups. Uh, the beans that I use are, look, are a company called Capital Roasters, who are based in Pembrokeshire in South West Wales. The beans are fair trade and organic, and I also offer semi-skimmed as well as almond milk. So as well as being eco-friendly and offering compostable cups and lids, if people do come up to me with a reusable cup, no matter where it's from, I will offer 25 pence discounts. Uh, Swansea Uni have been amazing in helping me with the business. In the future, I hope to have a fleet of smart cars around the country, uh, looking to firstly expand what I offer in terms of going into syrups and maybe looking at snacks to go on the side. And then from there, once I've established myself as a, as a business owner with GoGo -Go Coffee, I'd be looking to expand in terms of offering out more cars as a franchise across the country. My name is Shan. I'm doing accounting in Swansea University. I joined Swansea University three years ago by joining the 2 plus 2 program between Swansea University and East China Delta University. The teacher here is friendly. They inspire us. They give us feedback about the exam, which helped us a lot to improve in the future studies. Uh, in the first year, I also heard about the one-year employment program, which is like you have one year in industrial during this three-year studies. With the help of the School of Management Employability Team, I finally saw a job in the Swansea. They helped me draft my uh, cover letter, a uh, personal statement. They helped me correct my CV and make my CV more attractive. I received a phone call from the team every week. They just have like chat with me about what did I learn during this week anything new to me and also any difficulty I have met during this week if you want to experience something else like having a studies in another countries apart from the UK you can join the go abroad program there are lots of things that inspire you people from different backgrounds from lots of different countries they give you different ideas from all over the world and also the school also organize some like events just linking the students together which we can share the views and also share our experience. Welcome Luke. Um, he's a business management student in his third year now, um, in his final year with us. Luke did his placement at Honda Motor Europe Limited and he's here to discuss a little bit about, about his placement year and about the opportunities that he's been given uh, through our wonderful careers team here at the School of Management. So Luke, over to you. Brilliant, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm final year business management student. My course is actually business management with a year in industry. There is also the option of doing a year abroad. Uh, I thought a year in industry was better suited to me. 
I thought more practical application was more for me. I wanted to do something more hands-on. So as you can see, I did my placement at Honda Motor Europe. So just talk you through that. Uh, so firstly, I'll just go through the lovely little graphic I've got on the side of the screen there with all my skills and stuff and also touch on what I did. Then all the fun stuff, which I'm sure you all want to hear about, what opportunities I had, the cars I got to drive, etc. And then I'll go through how the employability team helped me here, um, the people who you're on track with, the people who will essentially really be on hand to make you more employable in the application process. So as I said, I work for the European head office of Honda. Through this, I'll be interacting with their branches, uh, so Honda Germany, Honda France, Honda Spain, etc. Um, mixing with different cultures across Europe in order to working within our sales in order to increase dealer profitability and essentially increase customer satisfaction. Um, it was a really daunting experience kind of going into it at the start, but I was really sort of set at ease with all the support I had and I really feel in summary really um, set up moving forward now and it's really helped my confidence. Um, I essentially worked on digital solutions and by the end I was almost running a project on my own for the last three months, uh, which was going around a car with an iPad called Electro and Vehicle Health Check and sort of doing videos and things and helping them uh, sell more parts essentially. So as you can see, I gained so many skills from my placement that have made me so much more employable now that I'm going through the graduate role application. I also have a familiarity with applying for, um, for roles. But when I go to interviews and things now, I have all those skills you can see, such as Excel. I was awful at Excel before I started. It was pointed out on my assessment day that I was the worst one there at Excel. Um, but then I became, by the end of the year, I was the go-to person for Excel in my whole division. Um, SharePoint, uh, networking, communication, general professionalism, how to sort of manage business small talk. It might make someone really daunted or presenting, but for me, it doesn't really phase me at all now. Um, Negotiation, talking with our branches, obviously as I said earlier, working with different cultures, um, how you might maybe restructure your approach depending on what specific requirements they may have. Um, and then project coordination, general organisation, staying on top of things, um, the confidence to pick up the phone and have a go at someone if they're maybe not doing what you want them to, if, if they're from a supplier and things like that. And then the fun stuff in the middle, I mean you can see at the top there presenting. I, uh, I presented to 150 people, the head of Honda for each of the countries across Europe, as well as people from their Japanese head office um, on the future of connected services and, and what Honda can do for their branches, essentially. Um, I went to the Brussels Motor Show, got to a load of cool sports cars and got to uh, go away to Belgium. Um, also went to the research facility in Germany, as you can see there, learned to ride a motorbike. I've, Drove a Honda Jazz for the year, um, and met a load of great people, got involved with other stuff. I think people don't realize it's not just your work, what you're doing, it's how you can get involved. I joined the Honda Fiber side team, et cetera. Um, it was a great experience where I just sort of threw myself into everything really. And um, one thing myself and all the uh, placement students can say is, is just ask, just ask and say yes. So I only got to Brussels because I asked to do it. I only, um, I only got to ride the motorbike because I said yes to something which just popped up in my emails. Um, but then sort of moving on to the more specific stuff on employability and, and how these guys here in the School of Management really help and it was one thing that I actually um, took into consideration when picking Swansea is how supportive their employability team are. Uh, prior to my second year I was applying for placements, I had an employability module so if you've got no familiarity, that the basics of networking events, they get you to go to a networking event and actually mix with people, uh, CVs, cover letters, all that kind of thing. And then during my second year, when I'm going through that application process, I think I applied to probably about 50, five zero placements. <laughs> um, it was a lot, but every single one, um, I'd be assisted with the employability team. You can show up once a year, or you can show up every day like myself, and they won't get sick of you. They'll sit with you, they'll pick through it, so you can really put your CV and your cover letter in front of people with confidence. Um, prior to my assessment day, they sat down with me and all the do's and don'ts, the things which might seem completely obvious to some people, but um, it really did help me. And then once I was on my placement, uh, monthly calls, updates, checking in, how I was doing, uh, not just on the work side and what I've done, but also then uh, whether I was struggling at all, it can be quite daunting working or moving away from home, but they were really supportive throughout. And I feel like now I'm really engaged and I know my employability team well and I have loads of confidence asking for help with grad schemes. I feel like I'm, 
I'm on my way with it a lot better than maybe my peers are. Brilliant. And how are you doing with the grab scheme applications at the moment, Luke? I've applied to a few. It's it's yeah. a, it's a lot of work. Um, I've got a, an interview coming up with a company. Uh, it just after um, after Christmas, and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm a lot further ahead of the curve than everyone else who sort of doesn't really appreciate the the time you have to put into applying for such schemes, the testing you have to do, and, and more sort of what they're looking for from you as well. I kind of I've sat on the other side of the table hiring my replacement and uh, and now I know what they're looking for. Yeah. Almost. Oh, amazing. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Luke. Uh, yeah, fascinating insight into uh, into Luke's experience um, here in the School of Management. Um, obviously, his placement year was so, so beneficial and we're lucky, really, as I say, that we've got such, uh, such a supportive employability team we're really proud of our graduate prospects here in Swansea, and that's that's something that we you'll hear a lot from us about. Um, you know, if, if you do manage to come to one of the open days, we'll talk to you about it in great detail. Um, so we are we're doing really well in some of the uh, the rankings for for employability, and it's because of the support that the students like like Luke are getting. Um, so yeah, so thank you, Luke. Um, next up, uh, we've got a section on student life. So uh, now I'm joined by, uh, by Sophie uh, and Maruva, uh, two of our students here in Swansea who are going to tell you a little bit about what it's like uh, to be a student here in Swansea and then we'll follow it up with some uh, questions uh, which you've sent in um, already actually uh, during the course of the session. Um, so Sophie, do you want to uh, begin and introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Sophie, I'm a second year business management student and if you can't tell by my accent, I am Welsh, I'm from Neath, so if you don't know that, it's about 10-15 minutes from Swansea and that I decided to stay at home for uni. Um, I had quite a few options for like universities to travel to but ultimately I decided on choosing Swansea simply because of this like, career prospects for graduates and I knew quite a lot of students that were already studying in the School of Management and they'd already told me that the careers team were awesome and they were brilliant and they helped you so much. So I thought, okay, maybe maybe this is a good uni. Um, I actually did decide to apply to some apprenticeships as well, but um, and I was offered them as well, but I came to the summer school in 2017, which you'll hear about later, and uh, I decided that Swansea was the place for me, so here I am. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sophie. Um, and we also have Maruva here as well. So Maruva, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, um, I'm Maruva. I'm an international student all the way from Zimbabwe. So I'm in my second year now studying accounting and finance. Um, I am not, unlike Sophie, did not decide to come to Swansea because it was close. If anything, it's probably one of the furthest <laughs> university options that I had. Um, and one of the main reasons why I decided to come to Swansea University, I have a year in industry for my course. Uh, yes, I have a year in industry. And Swansea University offered me a lot of support and a lot of communication as an international student. You want to know what your options are um, and to know what sort of you know, what direction can I go in, especially as a person who doesn't really know how everything works in the UK and you learn as you go. The fact that Swansea University was willing to offer me the support um, and there was always someone who had questions or who had the answers or who knew someone who knew the answer to my question. And that was very reassuring as a student who is sort of not sure of what direction to go in um, and definitely helps having people who are patient with me in figuring it all out. Brilliant. No, th thank you, Maruva. And that's yeah, really interesting to hear the international insight uh, to life in Swansea as well. 
Uh, now we've got a lot of questions that have come through over the last uh, or over the duration of the session so far. Keep sending them in. Um, we will monitor them as they come through and we'll do our very best to answer them as they come. Uh, the first question, which is a really good one, um, it's a nice broad one for you guys actually to start off with, um, is, is how have you found your course? Um, so I guess we can talk in that a little bit about maybe the teaching facilities and the community here as well. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously I'm in my second year now. So the first year for all courses you do have like just compulsory modules. So last year I did a bit of everything, so marketing, accounting, operations, human resources. And I found doing that kind of helped me what kind of areas I didn't like, what areas I did like. Uh, so now I'm kind of focused on analytical areas and marketing areas of business. Uh, this year I have also chosen predominantly coursework based modules, which has helped me a lot because I'm better at coursework on exams. Much better at coursework actually. Um, so that only means that I've got two exams in January, which also means I've got a nice chilled out Christmas, so that's fun. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, what do you think? I think so far, um, second year has definitely been difficult. I will start by throwing that in there. University is not easy, but it's been good so far. Um, on, on the flip side for me, all my modules are, ex they have exams in January. Um, and because I'm doing accounting and finance, I have a lot less flexibility around what my optional mo modules are, um, but still have enough scope to sort of venture into more business modules where I do get to select them. Um, I like the fact that there's a very good balance between accounting and finance. And then if I want to do an economics module, I can do that. So it's been, for me personally, very exciting to sort of learn things that I never expected to learn based off of the way that my modules have been set up. Um, and then what my additional optional modules look like for me to be able to fully get the most out of my learning experience for my course. So that's been very, very exciting-ish. Brilliant. What about you, Luke, as well? Uh, you obviously, I'm, I'm finding it now, so uh, I've, I've come back after a year out of my third year studying here. Um, I still am I'm enjoying uh, specifically studying on this campus. I think the, the, sort of the facilities um, being here, obviously, as I mentioned, the employability team, having that literally right downstairs. Um, I also have done a lot of coursework modules, um, but even still, I'm using office hours a lot more now. Um, maybe engage with my lecturers more than I did at the start, but the majority of them are so helpful and, and, they're, and they're willing, as a final student, if you're willing to engage with the module, they're willing to give that, that, uh, that time back, really. Brilliant. Um, so what are you talking about office hours there? What do, you, what do you mean? Is that a time you chat to your lecturers? Yeah, yeah. so uh, every lecturer will have office hours. They'll have times in the week that they specifically allocate, normally two slots in case you can't make one where they will be in their office in here in the School of Management and you can just sort of stop by, ask any questions you've got that they don't cover in the lectures. Um, it's just a really great uh, time, especially with, um, with third year where they really do um, put forward, as a professor, the, the individual learning, the time where you're taking on your own to go through the stuff. You're not going to understand it all first time. Um, as I said, they're all researchers in the field and it's just great to, you don't get something in a lecture it's a difficult thing, or maybe, oh, I really found this interesting for my essay. Have you got any authors that cover this topic? Yeah. And they're more than happy if you, if you stop by to, to really give you that information. Brilliant. Oh, that's great. No, thank you, guys. Um, plenty more questions to rattle through. Um, somebody here has asked, how far is the town centre from campus, and what, what is transport like? Is it easy to get around Swansea? Yeah, uh, so from this campus, it's about 15 to 20 minutes, and the bus is run someone correct me if I'm wrong, about 24 hours, six days a week, is it? Yep. Yeah, I thought so. Um, and also, I'd just like to add, if you do come to as Welsh Uni, hopefully Swansea, uh, you do get a third off bus travel, so if you try type in on Google, my travel pass, everything's on there, I'm not going to go into detail. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's really helpful because it does reduce bus costs for you, so I've got a bus pass for about £250 this year for the whole year. Brilliant. Yeah, that's great. No, thank you very much. Sorry, uh, I don't mean to interject, cool. but to add to what Sophie said, that works for the 8, the 8X, the 10, the 9, 
and yes. is that yeah. one of them? So that's four so different four different surfaces. buses to run from yeah. campus. So to it's campus not just the one service for mm-hmm. your two hundred fifty pounds. That's about four yeah. services that you can use. So you get your money's worth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. So in short, it's very easy to get yeah. around uh, in Swansea. So we're very yeah, we're very lucky. I think uh, you'd echo that. Definitely. Uh, brilliant. Um, got another question here. So uh, and this is an interesting one actually. So how much flexibility have you found? Uh, that there is within your course, say for example, in terms of adding that year in industry or or, or a year abroad or choosing specific modules, because I know there's a little bit of difference, say, between business management um, and, and accounting. So I don't know, Luke, for example, do you want to? Yeah, talk about I mean, I management? I originally was on the year abroad uh, course, and I as soon as I got here, went actually uh, when I, when I was signing up for unis, I thought uh, maybe a year away. I kind of looked at it as a year long holiday, and then I got here and went. Actually, no, that'd be more useful. And it was really easy. I just went to a desk and I went. I want to switch over now, um, and just one form, and I've been switched straight away. Um, you can actually leave it really late if if you're um, if you're in your, as long as you do that employability module. So I'd recommend if you're not sure when you arrive in your first year, just do it. Um, you can leave it late, and then all of a sudden, second, you can actually. No, I really want to do it. Um, and, and yeah, you can you can switch on whether you're on the business management, just three year course, or you're on a year abroad and you want to switch, or vice versa. It's really easy to do. It was just one form downstairs at the at the office, and they're really helpful, really easy. Brilliant. And in terms of the modules on the business management course, was there quite a lot of choice, or did you did you find you were sort of yeah. bombed into one area? I'm, myself, I'm still on the the general pathway. I'm not doing a specialism such as marketing or entrepreneurship. I considered doing one at the start, but um, I have just sort of chosen modules in a load of different areas which I want to go into the industry with. So in my CV now, depending on what role I'm applying for, maybe I'll put, I've studied these four modules and sort of tailor it to that. But I've, um, in my first year, I had all my compulsory modules. In my second year, I had one compulsory module and seven, which I just chose myself. And I could really choose things which I thought were interesting in, uh, were interesting, I was interested in, and then ones which maybe just looked a bit challenging, I knew nothing about, I knew realistically I was gonna have to get better at going into the world of business. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. I, and it's something that we're very, we're lucky again in Swansea to have with, particularly with that general business management pathway. A lot of our students come, and they take the, they, they enroll on the business management course, and they initially find they're not quite sure what they want to do at the end of it. But with the variety of modules that are available, you can you can tailor it to your strengths, you can tailor it to your interests. And as Luke as Luke has done there, that's that's really important. So yeah. And what about you, Maruva? Because I know you said there's a bit less choice with accounting, yeah. but that's because of accreditation, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So fortunately, well, it depends now on what you intend to achieve when you're studying accounting and finance. Uh, because the way that the modules are set up, you have accreditations for ACCA, SEMA, and a couple of other ones with many letters that I don't want to mess up, so I don't <laughs> offend people. Um, and, you know, for every, well, not every, but for many modules, especially for financial accounting, we get accreditations. So there's not much flexibility. And also there are, with the optional modules, some of the optional modules also have accreditation. So for auditing, that was an optional module. That's what I'm doing next semester. Um, so I balanced it out. I chose some with accreditations, and then I chose strategic analysis, which doesn't have an accreditation because you know, I just wanted some fun. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how else to make it sound less geeky than that. <laughs> um, so there, there is less flexibility, but fortunately, there's a good reason behind it. Mm. And you know, the university makes it very clear and helps you to understand the reason why the modules are set up the way that they are, um, to help you understand why the course is the way that it is, so that you can definitely get um, as many options as you want to. So once you've graduated, at least then, you know, you've got a lot less exams to write, which ultimately saves you time and money um, and effort. Um, and I take the lazy girl route out of everything. No. So that, that helped me a lot. Um, and then also with, sorry, just to borrow to what Luke said, for me on the flip side, as an international student, I chose to do a year in industry um, simply because if I wanted to change my mind, it's easier for me to sort of backtrack and change over because I have a tier four visa. Mm-hmm. So the easiest option as an international student is you'd rather apply for a year in industry and then if you decide that you don't want to do it anymore, then you don't have to. Um, but 
even as an international student, if you choose to pick up an, a year in industry, you still have the option and the ability to do that. And the university still offers you just as much support if you choose to have a year in industry or you're abroad. So that was really nice for me, um, as the person from the other side of the world, to, to know that I have those options and those opportunities as well. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's brilliant. That's really interesting. And in terms of, and this does tie into another, another question that we've had, um, so the question asked, what support is on offer when I moved to Swansea? So it's quite, it's quite broad and I'm sure you guys can answer as well, but particularly as an international student moving from about as far away as, as you can get, <laughs> what sort of support did you have when you moved here and, and how did they help you overcome the challenge of moving um, to Swansea? Well, I'll start from even being at home. We have a team that liaise with, liaises um, with people in Zimbabwe. That's where I'm from, in case I hadn't mentioned it earlier. Um, so I had people who came from Swansea University. They come to, you know, schools in, in my country every, I think, twice a year. Um, so I got to have conversations with actual staff members from Swansea University. And that helped me a lot because I got to at least build some sort of rapport with um, Swansea University. They gave us, um, you know, someone that we can get in contact with. So quite literally, as soon as I was doing my A-levels and I had questions, someone was communicating with me. Um, by the time I came here, um, accommodation is prioritized for international students, especially. So at least I got to know that regardless of if all else fails, I will have a place to sleep. Yeah. And that was very reassuring. <laughs> Every step of the way from my visa application process to me literally, you know, coming here, they, um, Swansea University offers a, a pickup um, for people from Heathrow. Um, so if you want to, if you don't want to come on your own, you know, but you are alone, the university does sort of offer that opportunity as well, that chance for people to sort of come through. Um, and then there's a, you know, my uni hub, um, the, the, um, what's it, the students union. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people who are constantly communicating with you and checking up on you and making sure, you know, how is everything going? Um, the student experience offices are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so if you ever need a good cry, oh. there is at least one person in your college who will listen to you complain um, or cry or laugh. So that was very, very lovely just to know that my voice matters. Yeah. Um, and I felt that throughout the entire time. And I still do, you know, when I have questions, even if no one knows, someone yeah. else will, that's will really be referred to me Yeah. to, to answer that. So yeah, that's, that's, really, that's been my experience. That's really useful. Thank you, Maruva. And what about you guys? So, so Sophie, have you had any yeah. experience, say, with the student experience officers as well? Or? Yeah, definitely. I've gone to them quite a few times either because I'm stressed or I have no idea what I'm doing but like they're so good like I, I would go to them saying I don't want to disturb you but I'm stressed but they helped me so much like they said like calm down you're in uni enjoy it and they helped me with work or like say if I didn't know what to do they would help me with like who to speak to about something or like how to find certain things for the coursework so they've really helped me especially this year yeah yeah of course definitely this year <laughs> yeah and luke have you got any more uh, advice have you have you had to use uh, any student support at all while you've been in swansea or I, I haven't used it too much i think it's there as little or as much as you as you want it i've had great support networks through uh, other students i'm part of uh, the lacrosse society um, and through that you have more experienced students uh, within that your seniors is if you're a fresher um, who will be there and, and they've kind of been there and done it as well. So um, I think that sort of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, communication also has been really good for me. Brilliant, yeah, no, that, that's great. We've probably got time for a couple more questions now. Um, so any questions that we, we haven't managed to answer now, uh, we will get back to you via, via email and answer them directly. Um, but there is one, one question here. So somebody's asking um, about uh, or whether there are any jobs on campus um, or are there volunteering opportunities? So Sophie? Um, yes, there definitely is. So I'm currently a student ambassador for the whole university and for the School of Management. So I work on open days, I work on different events like the big picture festival or during clearance, speaking to people, or during freshers week, helping people out. Um, I'm also a marketing assistant for the students' union. So if you follow the students' union like Instagram or in, uh, Facebook and you see a post up, that's probably from me. <laughs> Um, so and there's other jobs so like say if you want to work in the campus pubs or if you want to work with 
a certain department you are able to do that um, and also in terms of volunteering I'm currently the social media manager on the accounting and society committee so if you search accounting underscore swans follow us um, on Instagram on Twitter on Facebook LinkedIn with there. I'm posting pretty much every day at the moment so you can go follow that that's great <laughs> And, and how have you guys found maybe ju uh, juggling part-time work alongside your studies? And is that something that you're doing at the moment, Luke? Because the final year is full on. Yeah, I mean, it, it is it is full on. But uh, I've got, uh, I'm currently working for the school management for the employability team. I'm one of their employability champions. So we run workshops and, uh, and networking events to help you really prepare and add that sort of extra support mechanism. Um, I also have a part-time job working at the Swansea Liberty Stadium. As well, so I've got two part-time jobs and final year, and playing a sport. It's a lot. You juggle it, but you only do uni once, and yeah. uh, and actually you can manage that time really well. Yeah. Um, and that is almost the advantage of maybe having all that time in your timetable. It looks like you're not doing anything. You can really manage that. For example, I might work till ten in the evening one day, and then I can ch chop and change it depending on what I've got going on. Yeah. And the opportunity to be a student ambassador, you, you paid for that as well? Yes, Is that we something are. that you're... Yeah. Yeah. As, as an international student and the way that my fees are set up, I am happy to tell you <laughs> that I get paid. <laughs> at least I can contribute something to my pocket money. Um, I, I didn't want to say, you know, the, the good thing about the way that our timetables are set up, sort of to, to, to help with what Luke is saying, to support it. Um, is you don't get to change your lectures, but you do have flexibility around your seminar groups. Um, in the School of Management, we have seminar groups that kind of span throughout the whole week um, at different sessions. So if maybe your Fridays you may have a club um, and it clashes, you can sort of go and have the option to be able to change that around. So it helps then if you are working a part-time job or if something you know doesn't quite work with the way that your timetable is set up, Fortunately, you're able to sort of find ways to make it work, um, and that's that's a really good resource to have. Yeah, no, that, no, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's really really encouraging to hear. One more question, um, and it is it's about uh, really the cost of living and studying in Swansea. Someone has asked basically, is it expensive to live and study here in Swansea? What it's do you think? No. No, I mean, I, I, I live uh, in Swansea now, in like, the Uplands area of town. It's really close, really easy. It's pretty close to the other campus, but as you mentioned with the buses, I'm right next to the number eight and the number 10. I'm kind of near both bus stops, which is really helpful. Um, and my sister is currently a different university. I can tell you it's a lot cheaper here. Oh, really? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it really is affordable living here. Obviously, everything's relative. Um, you could go and get some really nice accommodation somewhere, I'm sure, or something pretty rubbish but the m value for money I get on my uh, on my second and now my final year accommodation was, was really good compared yeah. to other places yeah and what do you think Sophie as a, lo as a local student do you find it was quite convenient uh, cost effective living 100% yeah. yeah I've saved a lot of money because like, I know a couple of my friends have moved to London and you know it's not exactly the cheapest place ever to live in terms of just cost of living and like accommodation or just going out and having food or like going shopping or something is so expensive to shop elsewhere and then the difference is yeah. ridiculous. And Maruva as an international student there's going to be different uh, different costs involved there I would imagine. Yes, yeah. lots of them. Um, I suppose it is relative in comparison to all the other fees that I would have paid maybe in other universities in the UK, definitely a lot more affordable. Um, for my first year, I did get a £3,000 bursary. I know. <laughs> um, but that very quickly went into my rent, however. Um, so it, it, it really is um, give and take. It is definitely, even as an international student, and it's significantly more costly for me than it is for local students, but it is a lot more affordable than if I was to be in in London for a fact yeah. I will tell you that much oh that's great well that's more or less all we've got time for in terms of questions um, we do have a couple of other things just to cover before we close um, and one thing that we should be discussing is our student societies there is so much going on across the university in terms of sports and different clubs um, but we do have a huge amount of societies just here within the School of Management um, so I know Sophie mentioned her 
accounting uh, society. Um, we have a range of other other societies. We've got uh, Swansea Women in Business. We've got um, an economic society. Huge amount uh, of other things. So, have you guys had any experience with societies at all? Can you yeah, I, now? I, I I play a sport. Um, I joined lacrosse. I thought it was great for meeting people. Um, also, training on the other campus. It sort of I wasn't just uh, only sort of people I live with in halls, and it really sort of expanded my social group as well as as I said, sort of people who've been at uni giving you that support um, as well. Just sort of general things. I'm someone who loves sport anyway. Um, but sort of mixing with other people, playing a team sport, um, definitely you're not then just locked into your studies all the time. Um, I haven't really got involved with the academic side of it, but I, you've got involved with that yeah. quite a bit, haven't you? I'm, I'm complete opposite to Luke. I've done <laughs> no sport at all, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Um, but yeah, I'm part of the business society as well, and in November every year they organise a trip to Cardiff to go to the Interbiz exhibition. And it's really good because you get to speak to people in like different professions. Uh, you get to speak to people who are studying similar courses to you. So it really does expand your like, network, which I think is brilliant because like you get to meet people and you kind of get to say, oh, can you help me with this interview technique? Or like, how do I do a video call? Or how do I do a phone interview? So it's, it's actually really, really helpful. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh no, that's great. And Maruba? Uh, I kind of have commitment issues, so <laughs> I'm not exactly in one solid society. However, I do sort of show up to a lot of the different events that everyone offers. Um, I like the fact that I can pick and choose yeah. and exit as and when I want to. <laughs> um, so I've gone to a couple of basketball things. I have a gym membership with the gym on campus. It's great. Um, and then I definitely go to a lot of Swansea Women in Business events, and I also show up to a lot of subs, that's Swansea University Business Society. Yeah. Yes. So um, I sort of, I like to take advantage of the fact that you don't have to necessarily be a member for you to be able to take part in the events and the opportunities that they have. So that's what I do. Um, whenever someone posts something on social media, Sophie, thank you, um, <laughs> I'm there. So I'm not a member, but I'm definitely a very active participant in a lot of the things that happen within the School of Management. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, well, thank you very much, guys. Um, so hopefully this session has inspired you or at least given you a little bit of an insight into what it's like to study here in Swansea. Um, what I would encourage you to do is have a think about our summer school. So it's, it's an opportunity to spend three days here. You're living here basically for three days um, in the accommodation like a student. You'll be going to lectures like a student. There'll be plenty of activities as well, sports, quizzes, lots of fun too. All of your foods included as well. Um, this year it's taking place uh, between Sunday the 5th of, and Wednesday the 8th of July. Um, you can apply now. Um, we do have an early bird deal uh, which goes on until the end of February, until the 29th. So that's £130 if you sign up before then. Um, for now, I would encourage you to, uh, to go and check it out on the website, pop it into Google, have a look. Um, you can register your interest online. It's targeted particularly at people in year 12 um, because obviously you're going to be thinking about your university options. But that said, you know, if, uh, if you are maybe in year 13 or a bit younger, then get in touch with us and we can discuss, discuss various options as well. Um, I know, Sophie, you took part in the summer school, didn't you? Yeah. What, uh, what did you think of it? Did, did you enjoy it? What did you get out of it? Yeah, so I actually applied because I thought, well, it was the only university that I was aware of that did it. Um, and I was in two minds about going into an apprenticeship or going to university. Um, and I attended it in 2017, so at the end of my first year of uh, sixth form. Um, and honestly, it completely changed my view on university. So I thought oh, it would be better to just go into the world of work, you know, rather than spending three years in university. But honestly, it's the best experience before university. So I highly recommend applying. Brilliant. No, thank you very much. And like I say, that's more or less all from us now. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this virtual open day. Hopefully you can come and see us in the flesh next time. So we have got four more open days coming up over the next few months. Um, you should be able to see them on your screen now. Um, so it'd be just a great chance to actually see you here in Swansea. You can meet Luke, you can meet Sophie, Maruva, Harvey, and uh, everyone else who, uh, who makes up part of, uh, part of the university and part of the School of Management. So yeah, thank you very much for joining us and see you again soon.